Welcome to the Reconnection Club podcast, the show that helps parents heal troubled relationships with their adult sons and daughters. I'm your host, psychotherapist Tina Gilbertson. Each week, I'll offer you compassion, clarity, and personal development tips designed to help you reconnect not only with your child, but with yourself. Now, let's get started. unwanted estrangement often calls forth strong feelings of hurt, despair, fear, and so many other awful emotions. And for all of us, unpleasant feelings can be powerful enough to actually alter the way we think, including even our ability to reason. When we're not at our best or simply not paying enough attention, we can easily fall prey to something called cognitive distortions mental habits that only add to our suffering. It seems impossible to avoid falling into them, at least some of the time. It's such a human experience. But for parents of estranged adult children, it's critical to become aware of these. One type of cognitive distortion that seems to be very common for parents suffering from unwanted estrangement is called emotional reasoning. Emotional reasoning treats feelings as if they were facts. It says, the way I feel about things is the way things are. So if we feel hopeless, it must be because there is no hope in the situation. Or if we feel hurt, it must be that someone is trying to hurt us or doesn't care whether they hurt us. We believe our feelings because it makes sense for us to trust ourselves. Why would our own brains lie to us? Well, our brains do the best they can to make sense of the information available. But if the information available is that we feel awful, then the brain will dutifully report, things are awful. And that may be how we end up relying on our emotions rather than our intellect to process the evidence and understand what's really going on. Now, as the author of a book called Constructive Wallowing that's all about honoring and listening to emotions, I have to assert that there is a sense in which feelings are facts. They are the truth about what's going on within us. And they deserve our attention because they're essential to resolving commonplace emotional injuries. There is absolutely nothing wrong with allowing ourselves to feel exactly the way we do from moment to moment. I'm not talking about trauma. I think healing from trauma is a different project entirely. But when it comes to the typical emotions that all of us are subject to in the course of daily life, the feelings we have are perfectly fine to feel. We don't need to act on them, but to maintain our emotional health, we need to be able to feel them. Importantly, we also need to understand at the same time that our emotions are about our experience. They're not facts about the world or other people. Which is to say, during estrangement, when you're in the throes of painful emotions, watch out for emotional reasoning that leads you out of the frying pan and into the fire. Here's an example of emotional reasoning in parents estranged from adult children. Estrangement feels punitive, so it must be a punishment. When parents wonder what they did that was so bad or wrong for them to deserve to be so painfully rejected, that is emotional reasoning. If estrangement feels like a punishment to you, your brain will try to find a crime to match it. And when that doesn't work, confusion and resentment will quickly move in. And another round of emotional reasoning might then conclude This estrangement doesn't make sense as a punishment, so therefore, it makes no sense, period. And that's when you get into unproductive thinking that steers you away from your own influence toward any number of red herrings that may or may not be contributing to the estrangement, but out of your control. Another example of emotional reasoning is when you feel rejected or abandoned by an adult child's need for separation. Even if your child tells you they simply need time or space and they'll be back when they're ready, emotional reasoning might shout over them, I feel rejected, so my child must not love me. 
And by the way, that's because of my flaws or because I'm not good enough or whatever the fear may be. It happens all the time that parents completely ignore what their adult child says in favor of emotional reasoning, even when it would feel so much better to believe the adult child who says they just need some time and they'll be back later. False beliefs created by emotional reasoning lead to unnecessary suffering in the form of shame, confusion, and despair. So what can we do? How do we combat emotional reasoning? It's crucial to remember first that emotions do have their place. It may seem like a paradox, but to keep our emotions from dominating us, we have to fully embrace and consciously feel the feelings we have. Because once they're triggered, it's too late to decide not to have them. The key is to embrace feelings, but not necessarily the story they're telling. Once you're on the other side of a cleansing cry, then it may be time to revisit the evidence, especially if contact from your estranged adult child has been sparse or non-existent. You might realize that either you simply don't have enough evidence to draw a conclusion, or the conclusions you've drawn are incorrect based on the evidence. In summary, we're all entitled to our feelings. It's healthy to have them. But letting them control our thinking means they also control our beliefs and actions. And that often leads to trouble and more suffering. So I'll say to you what I tell myself. Love your emotions. Give them attention and a place at the table. Feel them. But don't mistake them for the reality that exists beyond your own heart. On the other side of any emotional storm, revisit the evidence. First have the storm in the privacy of your heart, then review the actual evidence. Enlist the help of a counselor, therapist, or trusted friend if you need another pair of eyes. You might find that emotional reasoning led you astray, and the situation is not exactly as it seemed. With clearer thinking, more possibilities may come to light, making room for a little more optimism and emotional freedom. Until next time, remember that you are a loving, lovable, and still growing human being. So please take good care of yourself. Bye for now. If you've enjoyed this episode of the Reconnection Club podcast, I invite you to check out ReconnectionClub.com. The Reconnection Club is for parents at any stage of estrangement from their adult, child, or children. So whether you've just realized there's trouble between you you've been living with estrangement for years, or you're newly reconciled but still walking on eggshells, the Reconnection Club is your essential resource for information, support, and continued personal growth. With our courses and workshops, expert interviews, monthly Q&A calls, and a friendly, active community, the Reconnection Club is a wonderful place to be for anyone suffering the pain of estrangement from an adult, child, or children. So check it out at ReconnectionClub.com.